If you've ever been in a car before, chances are you've found yourself stuck at a railroad crossing. These seemingly simple safety devices actually have a lot more behind them than you may think. In the first episode of my Railroad Infrastructure series, we will be going on location and exploring a variety of different railroad crossings around Metro Boston to learn about the new and old of railroad crossing infrastructure. Let's begin this video exploring a few crossings on the MBTA system. It's summer 2023, and my friend Petru and I find ourselves at Willow Street in Gloucester, a crossing featuring the MBTA's latest project, Flex Posts. So this is Petru Sofio, traffic design extraordinaire, and he's going to tell us about this project the MBTA is doing with these Flex Posts, what they are, why they're doing this, and what's interesting about it. So General Manager Ng, when he was at Long Island Railroad, he had this project at all of the great crossings on Long Island to add in these flexible delineators. And so the MBTA actually, in about a month, installed this treatment at every single intersection that kind of keeps drivers off the tracks. You know, it makes it very obvious you're not supposed to turn here. So this white line here is a fog line. It's on the right side of the road, so as you drive over the tracks, you keep it to the right, you know you're not supposed to turn onto the, on, onto the train tracks. And then they also have these flexible delineators that I'm kind of fidgeting with here. Sometimes when there's two tracks, they can put one here, one between the tracks, and then one one there. And I'm really impressed that he was able to do this so quickly to make all of our great crossings a little bit safer. Oh, hey. um, so we're at Willow Street and Cedar Street in Gloucester, Massachusetts. It's a cool crossing because these two streets intersect and split right at the crossing. And the gates are at strange angles. So Petrus, you have one minute to tell us what's interesting about this crossing, go. Okay, uh, uh, the crossing is also outfitted with really old equipment. It's got mechanical bells, it's got incandescent lights, it's got, you know, classic gates and stuff. Hey. Contrary to popular belief, not all railroad crossings are for cars. In fact, many are for just pedestrians and cyclists. This takes us to the MIT pedestrian crossing in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Because no cars have to go through here, there's no flex posts. Makes sense, right? Now Boston by rails, the train is on its way, the Reedville switcher. We are here at the MIT day. pedestrian crossing in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Petra, you have one minute to tell us why this crossing is special. Go. All right, pedestrian only crossing. That's the mechanical bell. That's going to this lights. There's no lights on the back, which is interesting. There's tape, duct tape on the railroad crossing. I didn't know what it sounds like because it has a mechanical bell. So. Now Petra's nervous because the train's coming oh, yeah, in. He doesn't know how the Grand Junction works. Let's go see it.
Welp, on this day, the MIT pedestrian crossing wasn't working. Better luck next time. Just like the locomotives that run on the rails, railroad crossings get refurbished and redone all the time. For example, let's take a look at Cross Road in Haverhill, Massachusetts. This crossing had an old mechanical bell for years, but in 2020 it was replaced with an e-bell. Let's hear what special guest Jacqueline has to say about the crossing. Greetings! We are here at Cross Road in Haverhill slash Bradford slash Ward Hill, Massachusetts with special guest Jacqueline What's and good? me. Cross Road is a legendary crossing that has been a rail fanning staple since my childhood. It was the spot a while back and check out these flex posts as we talked about in other clips with Petru. These are the new project. Jacqueline, give us a one minute tour of this crossing. Go. One minute tour? I mean... Nathan said that you got the flex posts and a lot of scenery going on. You got like wood, neighborhood, more neighborhood, strode up there, abandoned building. This is my first time here and I've been seeing, and I've probably seen like hours of footage here across from like mm -hmm. various rail fans or whatever. And like, I, I do kind of wish I went in like the golden era of Crossroad, like 2018, 2019, yeah. but like, it's fine. I'm here now. Like underwhelmed or overwhelmed? I mean, neither. I'm just chilling. Just chilling. Well, that was fun, but let's get back to Petru, where we find ourselves in Ashland, Massachusetts. Okay, we are here at Main Street. That's true. Petru, take the phone and tell us where we are. I'm here because this is a railroad crossing with a lot of technology behind it, as you can see from here with the traffic signals. So all these traffic signals are connected together. Yeah. So there's this traffic signal here, and it only turns red if a if a train is coming so the train's on its way it'll turn red and then the other two signals they will see that and give green extensions so like this will have a green and a green arrow and it'll clear all the people off the tracks and then it will give a phase to the side street as to not bring more people into this mid block section to queue for the railroad crossing so it's very cool it's neat to see how traffic signals interact with railroad crossing so that's something you might not have known this crossing and intersection out of 10. Speak very loudly because there's a truck. Seven. Seven out of 10, why? I don't know, it's pretty safe, but sometimes the railroad preemption doesn't work and 
There's a lot of traffic signal timing issues. Seven out of ten. I would give this an eight out of ten because I think it's cool. There's a bunch of lights. Um, there's like little crossing things in the middle of the street, which I think is cool. So I give it an eight out of ten. And yeah. Now we will make our way off of the MBTA system to the former Pan Am Railway trackage up in Rawlinsford, New Hampshire. Upon arrival at the Church Street crossing, you can immediately observe the lack of flex posts. And since this project is the MBTAs, there's no reason for them to be up here on CSX trackage yet. Hey guys, we're here at Church Street in Rollinsford, New Hampshire. Petru, give us this one minute rundown of this crossing. You have one minute, this go. Is actually coming. Okay, so here's the railroad crossing. This is a extra pole that they add for visibility because there's a cross street, it's a three-way intersection. It's also got eight inch lights. Every intersect signal on this crossing has eight inch lights, which is pretty unique. I like that the crossing bell sequence is cool. So on Pan Am River crossings, the crossing bell rings until the gate's down, and then again when the gate is going up. Where the MBTA, the gate, the bell rings the whole time, and on CSX and Norfolk Southern, the bell only rings at the beginning of the crossing sequence, which I don't really care for. That may have been the craziest Doppler effect ever. That horn was amazing. You said that horn was bad. I stand by what I said for the record. The quill was so cool. I didn't like it. Though. I was happy with that. Uh, what do you rate this crossing? Five. Like, four. An eight. Eight out of eight ten. Eight out of ten. You know, it does its job. It's not like the safest, but it's cool crossing and it does its job. It's got LED lights, but it's the cool LED lights, which is my favorite kind. These are my favorite kind of... I wouldn't know the difference favorite kind because if you look at them they actually are like mini octagons which is like a stop sign symbol which is actually up mini there octagon. you see that i don't i don't see it i would give this a solid seven out of ten okay i think it was a great shot yeah it's a cool shot um i just Train think it takes a lot cool. to get an eight out of ten um well, there's a lot of people speeding so about yeah. And there might not be enough warning signs. No bike that, lane. Look at look, like there's a faded railroad crossing warning over no, here. There's no. Uh, it's not no. really. I feel like an accident okay. could happen. Uh, okay, you know Especially what? around this bend. Into a six out of ten because oh. the pavement markings are really. Our final crossing of the video is in Tewksbury, Massachusetts. This crossing on CSX trackage is the same situation as the last. Notice the cantilevers hovering above the tracks. This is a big road. And that means a bigger crossing. Oh, hi, Boston by Rails and Petru and Isaiah here in Tewksbury, Massachusetts at East Street Crossing. Petru, you have one minute to tell us why this crossing is cool. Go. Oh, it's not going to be as good as last time. Go. I can't run around. Okay, go. Okay. Uh, it's got this left side cantilever right here. Uh, I believe this is the only left side cantilever in the state. Um, at least one of the few only ones. Uh, those are rare. Uh, there's also a railroad crossing bell that uh, is only used at this crossing, like in the world. Uh, there is like an e bell, like that's very unique. So.
I hope you all learned a little bit more about the interesting complexities of railroad crossings. It's good to see places like the MBTA implementing new safety devices, and I hope other railroads will follow suit. Anyways, I will see you all again soon, out there on the rails. Thank you.